Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to another video of the Hardware Legends video series. When I came up with the idea of doing a video specifically about Hardware Legends, um, I decided not only to discuss uh, real legends like the SR2 or like an Intel Skull Trail, but also hardware that's very unique and extremely rare. Same goes to the EVGA 2Win series, because those cards are really hard to find nowadays. Talking about the GTX 460 Ti 2Win and also the GTX 560 Ti 2Win. So dual GPU cards made from EVGA. I think those are also the only real dual GPU cards that ever made it to the market for GTX 460 and also 560 Ti. As far as I know, there were also cards from Sotec and from Galaxy, now only called Galax after Samsung stole their Y. And I think Sotec and Galax made cards also for GTX uh, 460 and maybe also 560, but I'm not sure about availability. Not sure if they ever made it to the market in the EU or in the US. I think there were some patent problems, especially with Zotac. That's why it could be that those cards never made it to the market. If you have more information about this, feel free to point it down in the comments below, especially if I'm missing one of those cards in my collection. Would always be happy to have more information about this. But let's start with the GTX. 460 to win or GTX 460 uh, Ti X2. As I said before, this one is from EVGA. Just giving you an overview of the card. We will disassemble the card and then talk about some of the specs of this model. You can see the shroud in front. We see three small fans and some heat, heat sink design underneath. If we rotate the card, you can clearly see that it's a dual GPU card just by having those two very specific things. Just how a PCB looks from the back when you look at a dual GPU graphics card. What's also interesting is that there's a sticker on here saying, note, SLI is not supported on this product. Which is funny because there is an SLI finger right here, which indicates that originally maybe this card was planned to have SLI, but then it didn't. I think Nvidia didn't like the idea of having uh, GTX 460 four-way SLI support, so I think probably they cancelled this driver-wise and then EVGA had to probably put a sticker on there to block it because I also saw some stuff, some reviews online where somebody tried to do quad SLI with one of those cards and it didn't work. You can just enable a two-way SLI if you're running two of those cards or if you want to run two of those cards in quad SLI. After removing the shroud of the card, you can see the fans from underneath, we see the card was meant to run with two times eight pin connectors. I think the TDP or the rated spec of this card was 160 watt power consumption peak. Let me just unplug those fans quickly. We'll make it easier. Okay, so we have two split up heat sinks, one heat sink for the right GPU and one heat sink for the left GPU. Again, you can see the SLI finger on top here, which is taped. But let's quickly remove the GPU heat sinks as well. The card is GF104 based. That's Fermi, so the card is from early 2011. That's quite old already. We will talk about some performance numbers later. But the card is rated with uh, 700 megahertz on each GPU using 300 36 shader units on each individual GPU and then consuming as I said before or the card was rated at up to 160 watt power draw. After removing the heatsink we see both GPUs both GF104 the Fermi based GPUs and we also see this NF200 Nvidia bridge chip right here which also makes contact to this heatsink over an additional thermal pad so the left heatsink also has to dissipate the heat from the ad additional NF200 bridge chip. As far as I know, this one has a TDP of 6 to 8 watt. It's not that bad for the GPU. Back then, if you were using two of them on some mainboards, it would really increase the power consumption of your mainboard. But for a GPU, I think even a dual GPU card back then, it was fine. The right GPU using the heatsink like this doesn't have any additional contact zone. The VRMs or even the memory modules, nothing were additionally active cooled. It's just pure airflow on the components. So the chokes right here and the power stages right here, I think. Um, if I would count, I think this is like a four or maximum five phase 
uh, power design on each GPU, so nothing really special, especially co considering back then those GPUs were really power hungry. Um, if you think back, like GTX 460 Lightning would really benefit from having a very strong VRM, while 460 reference design would not overclock that well. Nowadays, reference design is already so, already so good that a typical custom design like a Lightning or even a Matrix doesn't do much to the overclocking. It just depends on the individual GPU nowadays. Back then, it really helped to have a more or a stronger uh, VRM layout. Let's compare the GTX 560 Ti to win to the 460 Ti to win. The base difference, obviously, apart from cooler design, are the different GPUs. I already removed the shroud. Looks pretty similar. I think nothing really changed right here, except from, I think the original one feels like aluminum. Not sure, could also be plastic, but this one for sure is plastic. It's a lot lighter and feels warmer. So yeah, that's a good indicator for being plastic. What definitely changed is the cooler design. You can see the 560 has a much better cooler design. I think it's uh, more mass. You have more mass in the center than the fin structure on the side, but I think in overall it's more surface area, more mass. I think it will be better cooling than before because this is also Fermi 2.0 based, which means that this card is using two GF 114 while this was using 104 so it's Fermi 2.0 improved GPUs not much difference though it's still 40 nanometer but it went from 336 shaders on the 460 to 384 shaders on the 560 and also power consumption increased a little bit it's still 2 times 8 I think power consumption increased by 10 watt this is 170 TDP rated and this is 160 TDP rated. VRM also improved slightly. We see different inductors right here, a little bit better inductors. And uh, the general VRM design is still the same. Same VRM controllers, same power stages, nothing really changed. It's also still the NF200 bridge chip right here. Not much difference actually between those cards. I think they're almost identical. If we take a look at the back side and compare both cards can straight see that it's basically the same PCB. It's based on the same PCB layout. Also the reading right here says EVGA Corporation model number 54 and it's the same still here. So it's still EVGA Corporation model number 54. The layout of the components of all the SMDs is identical. I think some markings are different. What's also interesting is that the SLI finger is not covered anymore, but the 560 Ti also does not support quad SLI. So this one really does not make sense. Again, could be that it was meant to support quad SLI in the first place and then Nvidia maybe decided to not allow quad SLI on those cards. Overall, we can say that the GTX 460 to win and 560 to win are identical cards. It's almost the same PCB. The only thing that's different is that 560 also has those small shunt resistors for power measurement. And we're using the GF114 over GF104. So very, very small difference, but still two pieces I like or love to have in my collection. But what about performance? Let's take a look at a number of 3D mic fire strike. GTX 460 to win 5360 points. The 560 to win 5764 points. That's an increase of 7.5%, mainly related to the additional clock speed and also additional amount of shaders. If we compare that to a GTX 1050 Ti, GTX 1050 Ti is really not a high-end GPU. It's still faster. It's 21% faster than a 560 to win, almost 7,000 points in 3D Mark Fire Strike. And now, if we take a look at an RTX 2080 Ti, it's almost five times faster than a GTX 560 to win with 27,000 points. So yeah, there is a significant increase of performance over the last eight years, obviously, but eight years, five times more. And considering that then, yeah, 580 was more performance. So I think it's over the last eight years, maybe three to four times more performance. It's not as impressive as I thought, but if you have still one of those cards, GTX 560, then yeah, even a GTX 1050 Ti would be a good upgrade for you. Thanks for joining in into this Hardware Legends video series and see you next time. Bye.